Okay, folks, uh, one more video here. Have a little fun. Uh, last couple videos, we were playing with some of the auxiliary inputs and outputs on some of these oscilloscopes. And uh, got me to thinking about uh, playing with the Z axis a little bit more. And uh, it's actually a cool project that a lot, of, uh, a lot of folks have done online, and there's nothing really original about this, but I just thought it was cool. Basically, to turn your oscilloscope into a video monitor. So that's what we did. So uh, there's the circuit right here, okay, and really what it is, it's really simple. So if we look at uh, a schematic here, uh, so it's uh, using a, uh, an LM1881, uh, uh, which is basically a video uh, sync separator. I got composite video coming in here, AC coupled into there, a couple of uh, components that you need to kind of get it going, and you get essentially a, um, a vertical sync and a horizontal sync out of that. Okay, and uh, with those vertical and horizontal sinks, they're just pulses. So I wanted to create ramps, okay, because we're going to put the scope in XY mode. So we want to create a ramp voltage that uh, varies, um, you know, between each of the vertical pulse, vertical sink, and horizontal sink pulses. So the way we do that is this: pretty simple. Uh, set up this little circuit right here, which is setting up these two transistors as current sources. Okay. So it's just a constant bias here, sets up these guys as current sources, they basically pull current down, these legs here are charging up these capacitors, creating kind of an inverted ramp, okay, because really for one of them, for the actually the uh, Y input, I needed it to be inverted. The X input doesn't have to be inverted, we just invert it back on the scope again. So that creates these negative ramps, and then the sync pulses themselves, they're negative going pulses, they turn on these transistors, which reset these caps back to VCC. So that's how it kind of works, is that the current source pulls down on these things and creates a ramp. When that sync pulse comes along, it uh, bang, discharges that cap back up again, and then when it let, lets go, it starts doing it again. So now I've got these two ramps. I can apply them to X and Y, put the scope in XY mode, and I get a raster on the display. So now all we need to do is apply the composite video signal to the Z-axis input. The problem is that the scope uh, z-axis input is inverting, meaning that the positive signal starts to dim the uh, uh, the video or the the trace. So we really want it to go the other way because the video here, the more positive, the, the higher the luminance. So um, so a simple little transistor inverter here. I just bias up the transistor, essentially unity gain, and just take the output off the collector and that gives me an inverted video. So that goes to the z-axis input, there's my x and y-axis input. So as a little twist, what we'll do is we'll take, there's my circuit kind of built up on the uh, my demo board there. See my probes going all off to x and y. And uh, so what I want to do is set up the video camera here in front of the scope. And uh, while I'm doing this, if I get this tripod kind of set up here, some folks have also asked if I could do a little lab tour. Uh, so I thought the fun thing to do here would be let's do a lab tour but do it using my this, the scope screen here as the video monitor. So let's do that. So let's kind of move this around. That should be good. We turn my video camera on. Okay. And uh, I just need to go tell video camera to put its output out on the thing. There's, there's my my signals there, but I'm going to put the scope into XY mode and uh, let me turn the display off and there we go. So, let's see, there's me. Hello, let me turn the brightness up on the scope. Okay, so there's the scope acting like a uh, a monitor looking at me. Okay, so let's do uh, the, video, the lab tour. So, I'm going to turn it around. There's my camera pointed at the scope that we're actually doing this on here. That happens to be a Tektronix uh, 485. Okay, one of my favorite little scopes here, 350 megahertz scope. So if we kind of move over here, uh, that scope right there is a 2465. That's another 300, 350 megahertz scope, four channel. Above that is a, uh, a frequency counter, and above that there, that's my uh, 1401 spectrum analyzer module that I featured in a couple of videos a few weeks back. Okay, so coming up to the shelf up here, there's just a an RF signal generator right there. And uh, kind of sitting up above that is a, a variable attenuator uh, for RF. Underneath that is a, a function generator that I built about 20 years ago. Uh, underneath that, the thing with the meter on it there, that's a, uh, 
an AM or FM uh, deviation meter. Actually, that one's just an FM deviation meter for looking at uh, like VHF, UHF, whatever, FM modulation. The scope sitting under that, kind of back up here, that's a 2467. Um, a really nice, a really nice scope. Uh, let's see, now going over here, that's an RF signal generator, a Roden Schwartz uh, SML01. And sitting above that is a, uh, a spectrum analyzer, an Agilent uh, E4411B, uh, 1.5 gigahertz spec an. Uh, sitting up above that, uh, see that's a, an old Tektronix Type 114 pulse generator. Okay, and then that's a, uh, a TM503 chassis that has a function generator, a frequency counter, and a power supply built into it. And above that, uh, oh, stretching more out here, that's my homebrew ESR meter. There's also a video on my site here about that. Oh, and the video turned off. Let me turn the video back on again. Since I wasn't really recording anything, the, uh, the camera just decided to shut off here. So let's turn that back on. There we go. Finish up our lab tour here. Okay. So uh, that's my ESR meter, and kind of over here, that's actually a Heathkit uh, deviation meter. Okay, underneath that is the, my leader uh, LG1311 function generator that I featured a few weeks back that we fixed. And then there's a, uh, an old exact uh, company uh, model 556 uh, function generator, which is pretty cool. It's got kind of a military look for it, look to it. That's kind of why I like it. Um, so that's over there too. And then down here on the bench top, I've got a couple of uh, small little power supplies, these little HPs that uh, work really well. One of them, the middle one there is powering up the circuit. And then I've got a heavier 20-amp uh, uh, B&K Precision power supply there. There's a little uh, Tektronix TDS uh, 2014 uh, 100 megahertz 4-channel digital scope uh, back there. Uh, bird watt meter and a couple of uh, DMMs. And there's my uh, uh, Simpson 260. Uh, let's see, there's that little, my shortwave receiver, this little uh, 10 tech uh, 1354, or, yeah, it's still 10 tech uh, um, shortwave receiver kit that I put the S meter in, uh, that featured that in a couple of videos. And uh, let's see, there's the Tech 465B. I've had that scope for about 20 years. So that's my basic little lab tour. There's some more stuff up on the shelf up there behind me, uh, wires and some other pieces of test gear. But that's basically what my uh, my lab is like. And uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, you don't want to see me in living color. This is this is as close as you get. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and the little project. And it's uh, kind of fun to turn a, a scope into a video monitor. So uh, fun stuff.